Hello, I'm Jackie from IELTSJackie.com. To write a high-scoring formal IELTS letter, you need to get the structure right. This is one of the things you'll learn in this lesson. The lesson will also take you step by step through the whole process of writing a formal letter. Here's what we'll be covering. The six part letter structure, formal or informal, how to tell the difference, four simple steps of letter planning and a sample letter. You can use the same basic structure for answering both a formal IELTS letter and an informal one. Ideally, your essay should consist of four paragraphs with a greeting at the beginning and a sign-off at the end. Start with the greeting, which for formal letters will be dear, followed by whoever you're writing to. In paragraph one, state the purpose of the letter, that is, your reason for writing. In paragraph two, write about the first bullet point. In paragraph three, write about the second bullet point. In paragraph four, write about the third bullet point, And finally, sign off your letter. With only 20 minutes allowed for the task and a requirement of just 150 words, you won't be able to include much detail. The main paragraphs, that's two, three and four, only need to be around 50 words each. Aim for quality in your letter, not quantity. That is the right information written in a logical order. Having a structure to work with will help you to achieve this. Your first task is to decide if the question requires you to write a formal letter or an informal letter. If you get this wrong, you'll get a low score for task achievement. The two types of letter have a very different tone and style and the language you use will also vary. It's very simple to tell the difference. Follow this rule. If the question includes the word friend, use informal language. If the question does not include the word friend, use formal language. Here are examples of two questions that require formal letters. Question one. You are unable to attend the farewell party for your boss at work. Write a letter to him or her. In your letter, say why you can't come. Tell them what you valued about working for him or her and give him or her your best wishes. Question two. You recently ordered something online. When the delivery arrived, it was not complete. Write a letter to the company. In your letter, explain what you ordered and what was missing. Explain the importance of the delivery and ask for a replacement item to be sent. Sometimes students get confused by a letter that's to a work colleague or manager who you could be friends with. In this situation, you may have been taught to use a semi-formal tone. My opinion is that learning a third style of letter writing is unnecessary. You already have enough other things to learn. For your test, assume that they are not a friend and write the letter in a professional style, that is, in a formal tone. The other situation that can be confusing is where the person you have to write to is a neighbour. Again, assume that you do not know them very well and write a formal letter. If you follow the rule of only writing an informal letter when the question contains the word friend, you'll be fine. Next, we'll look at how to plan your letter. It's very important that you take time to plan before you begin writing. There are three reasons for this. Planning will save you time. It will result in a more relevant answer and it will help you to meet the marking criteria. There are four steps to writing a high scoring formal letter. One, understand the topic. Two, identify who you're writing to. Three, identify the three things you must write about. And four, generate ideas. Once we've completed this quick and simple process, we'll be ready to write a high quality letter. For my step-by-step -step guidelines, 
I'm going to use the first of our sample questions. Here it is again. Pause the video if you want to read through it to refresh your memory. Now for our plan. Step 1. We need to understand the topic. The topic of the question will be stated in the first sentence of the question. Here's a topic sentence from our sample question. You are unable to attend the farewell party for your manager at work. This is what your letter will be about. It's the purpose for you writing the letter and must be stated in the first paragraph. For example, Thank you for the invitation to your leaving do on Saturday the 15th of May. Regrettably, I am unable to come. Many students make the mistake of missing this purpose sentence out, but it's very important. Including it will gain you marks. Step 2. Identify who you're writing to, that is, the recipient of the letter. The person you required to write your letter to will be stated in the second sentence of the question. In our question, it says, write a letter to him or her. Him or her refers to your manager, so this is who you must write to. Step 3. Identify the three things you must write about. You must include three things in your letter and they will be shown in the three bullet points in the question. Here are the bullet points for our question. 1. Say why you can't come to the party. 2. Tell him or her, that is your manager, what you valued about working for them and give them your best wishes. You don't need to write about anything else. Finally, we must think up some ideas to write about for each bullet point. If we do this before we start writing, we'll know what we're going to say and won't need to keep stopping to think about the next idea. With only 150 words to write, you won't need many ideas. Just be sure to cover the three bullet points and develop each idea fully. Here are a couple of tips to help you. Write about a personal experience if possible. If you've experienced a similar situation to the one you have to write about, use this for your ideas. It will make planning quicker and help you to use natural language. You get marks for relevant ideas, not clever ideas. So your ideas do not have to be the best you can possibly think of. They just need to be related directly to the bullet points. Go with your first thoughts and don't waste time trying to think of better ideas. Note your ideas beside each bullet point on the exam paper. Like this. For say why you can't come, I've noted wedding anniversary, husband has booked tickets to the theatre. For tell them what you valued about working for him or her, I've made notes that say felt welcome when new, supportive, encouraged to develop strengths. And for the final bullet point, give him her your best wishes, I've noted down, wonderful retirement, golf. We'll now add all this detail to the letter structure. When you practice, do this as you work through the planning process. Here's a quick reminder of the letter structure. And here's the structure with the detail added. Pause the video and spend a few minutes studying it. There are two parts of the letter structure that we haven't looked at yet. The greeting and the sign off. For the greeting, always start your letter with dear and follow these rules. Use dear sir or madam if you don't know the name of the person you're writing to. Use dear and surname if you do know their name. For example, Dear Mr Smith or Dear Mrs Jones. You would obviously know the name of your manager at work, so just make up a surname for them. There are three ways you can sign off your letter. Yours sincerely, yours faithfully and kind regards. Follow these rules when deciding which to use. If you start the letter with Dear and the surname, 
for example, Dear Mr Jones, you should end it Yours Sincerely. If you start the letter with Dear Sir or Madam, end it with Yours Faithfully. Kind regard is formal but friendly and is also appropriate for many situations. It's particularly useful if you struggle to remember how to spell sincerely and faithfully. Always sign off a formal letter with your first name and surname. For example, yours sincerely, Jackie Spear. Here's an example of a formal IELTS letter written following the guidelines and structure in this lesson. Pause the video and read through it. You'll notice that I haven't used contractions, for example, I'm, you'll. Contractions are informal language and should not be used in a formal letter. This sample letter is over the minimum word limit, so you can see that you don't have space to include very much detail at all. Now use what you've learnt in this lesson to practice answering other formal letter questions. Start slowly at first and keep practicing until you can plan and write a complete letter in around 20 minutes. I've created step-by-step -step lessons with model answers for each of the seven most common IELTS topics. You'll find them all on my YouTube channel and on the website. I've put a link to the writing menu page of the website in the notes below this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon. Goodbye for now.